In the last video we talked about some legal issues and now we're going to look at the laws that back up some of the things we were talking about. The first of which is the Catchy Copyright Designs and Patents Act, the CDPA, which was introduced in 1988, so quite a while ago now. And this act protects the intellectual property rights of individuals and organisations. So this is all about the IP we're talking about, so creations of the mind is the legal term, so things like inventions and in our context, algorithms, software and things you produce on the web. And this law makes it illegal to copy, modify or distribute software or other intellectual property without permission of the original author. Another consequence of this is that it's also illegal to download IP without permission. It's very relevant to computing, things like music and films are downloaded legally very often because you don't have permission of a copyright holder. Most commercial software comes with a license agreement which specifies how you as a user can uh, you know, use the software, whether you can do things like copy, modify, distribute it. And the license proves in the first place that you're actually allowed to use it, you've paid for it or got permission. So a license key is often required to access the software. A second law that's very relevant to our purposes is the Computer Misuse Act of 1990. So this law makes it a criminal offence to make any unauthorised access to computer material with an intent to commit or facilitate commission of or further crimes, so basically if you're going to do more crimes down the line, like theft or blackmail, if you steal some data by hacking or use spyware to collect some data and use it to blackmail someone. Also, um, an authorised access to computer material with intent to impair the operation of the computer, so causing damage to that system maybe through viruses. So this is the law that makes hacking or cracking illegal unless you have explicit permission to do it. I think the fact that there are two points that fall under this law is very important. Impairing the operation of computers is quite obvious I suppose, but committing further crimes is, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, but maybe that's not the first thing you'd think of. A third law which is very important is companies collect more and more data about is the Data Protection Act of 1998. So the purpose of this is to regulate the processing of information relating to individuals, including the obtaining of the information in the first place, storing the information or holding it, using the information or actually disclosing the information. So um, not a very easy law to digest. I tried to read the original act uh, with not much success. The implication is it creates rights to people who have data stored about them, so pretty much everyone. Like you can view the data stored about you, you can get it to be changed if it's incorrect which they have to do, and you can also prevent your data being used for purposes you don't want it to be, like direct marketing, like cold calls, telesales. There are eight what is known as data protection principles in this act, and I've highlighted the bits which are important. You, you can't be expected to remember all of them, but the bits I've highlighted kind of give you the gist. So data should be processed fairly and lawfully, so you shouldn't, they shouldn't collect data by deception perhaps. The second point is basically about they can't change the original purpose to make it illegal, Third point is that the data should be not too excessive in relation to the purpose. They shouldn't collect data which has got no relevance to their original purpose, like the business they are doing. The fourth principle is important. The data should be accurate and kept up to date. Data should be not kept for longer than it should be. Perhaps if you close your account, you should be able to request that your data gets deleted. And very importantly, you've got the right to access data kept about you. And importantly, you have a right to access data kept about you, so you can see what data is stored about you and you can update it if it's incorrect. Seven is all about the fact that they should protect your data, they shouldn't let it be uh, publicly available, they've got to have good security. And on a similar theme, the eighth point is all about the fact that data shouldn't be transferred to anywhere which is less secure than it is now. There are some exemptions, of course, things like national security, that's often an exemption. Um, GCHQ can kind of collect what data they want, as can departments which work on things like crime and taxation. And finally, domestic purposes are not covered by this, so if you're collecting data just about your friends and family, perhaps, that's obviously fine, you don't have to adhere to all of this. The Freedom of Information Act, introduced in 2000, but I think it actually was implemented in 2005, is an act which gives the public access to information held by government authorities by, first of all, them being obliged to publish some information about their activities, so things like who they are, what they do, their total budget and so on, so they can't be kind of secretive government agencies, they've got to publish some information about what they do because it's in the public interest, they're paying taxes for their budgets. And also, the public should be able to request information from them. And the general idea is that official information, in order for the government to be held accountable and for us to feel like the government is acting in our best interests, should be public by default, unless there's a good reason for it to be secret. And requests which are rejected have to be justified by the department, so they can't just say no, they've got to give a reason. So often it'll be on national security grounds or data protection grounds, so national security they can't give details about, you know, operations being done overseas, or data protection they can't give information about individuals unless it's very much in the public interest. And finally, the odd one out is Creative Commons licensing, CC licenses, because this isn't a law, but it is relevant to this field, so we're going to include it anyway. So, a CC license enables a free distribution of otherwise copyrighted work. 
So basically it's a way of an author giving permission to people to use their work. And actually the Creative Commons organisation says that they shouldn't be used for software or hardware due to possible conflicts with patents in individual countries and other software specific licences. So actually they're not really used for software or hardware but they're used for lots of things on the web and lots of resources which are used. Under this category there are four rights which an author can choose to include in their licence. The first of which is attribution i.e. if the work is used they've got to get credited. Share alike means you can't apply a more restrictive license down the line. If it was initially sent to you without attribution required, you can't then add attribution if you were to send it on, that's not fair. The third is non-commercial, you can't make any money from this free uh, piece of work, you can't then sell it. And no derivative works means you can't change it and remix it or do that sort of stuff, which is less common but some authors don't want you to actually change their initial work. And when you apply a CC license you'll probably use a combination of these to comprise the actual license.